Hi, it's DJ here. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm just going to show you a quick video on something really, really cool. The Waldorf Iridium. That puppy right over there just got MPE support with the new 3.0 beta that's coming out. So I want to show you real quick what that's all about. All right, let's go. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to start from a sound from scratch. This is a scratch sound. Initialized. Okay. And what I've done is I've set it up for MPE mode. And the way I did that is I hit the global, go to the MIDI settings right here, the DIN MIDI, set the MPE on off there. Okay. So that's back on. Now, what that does is if I go back to here, okay, this allows me to have three new uh, destinations, or I should say it's three new sources for the different controllers. Now, with MPE, there are three controllers. There is an X, there is a Y, and there is a Z. The X, okay, is usually dedicated to pitch. So what does that mean? If I play a note here on my Keyboard Pro 4, and I wiggle it, that's going to give me a, a vibrato, a nice pitch there. But with MPE, MIDI polyphonic expression, I can hit two notes and only have one, say for example, you know, change the pitch. So if I hit the D here, and then I hit the A on top of it, and I only want the A to wiggle, or I only want the D to wiggle, it has polyphonic expression. So that's very, very cool. Now, the next one is the Y plane, the Y axis, I should say. And that's usually on here, the up and down motion, like that. But I have to assign that. So what I want to do is I'm going to take the position of this given wavetable, okay? And I'm going to assign that. So I'm going to hit the mod, hit modifications, okay? And I'm going to go directly to the matrix. And one of the cool things now with 3.0 is that it already has that as the destination. Uh, that's something new. Now I want to select the source. Scroll down. And there we have it. The MPE Y axis. So if I want that affect the position, I'm going to raise the amount. Yeah, I'll go to about 50%. Okay. So now when I play. Now, the position here of the wavetable will change. Unfortunately, it doesn't animate this for you, but you can hear it. And it does independently for every note. Awesome stuff. Okay. Now, the next plane is the Z plane. In this case, the Z plane is actually dedicated to aftertouch. So we can assign anything to aftertouch. Let's just say, for example, we want to assign the filter to aftertouch. Okay. So we'll assign the cutoff to that. Modulations. Okay. And I can do that right here on this screen. I want to cut it off. Have it go down. Okay. So now this is filter one. When I hit the aftertouch. Okay, that affects it on one note, but now I can affect it on multiple notes independently. And to further demonstrate that, you can see that here on the screen that the uh, Keyboard Pro 4's uh, editor, you can see the little dots and the amount of aftertouch that I'm applying. Take a look here. The smaller the circle, the less the aftertouch. And that relates directly to the amount of cutoff that is being applied to the sound. And now I can do that independently for each note. Combine that with sliding. And the Y pitch. That makes some great MPE stuff. So, 
that's basically how it works. Now that the Iridium has that, there's going to be a whole lot more fun coming. So this is just a quick video on that. Thought I'd share it. Share it. This is what's coming. Thanks so much for watching. Hey, check out tjontheroad.com for more. Share and subscribe to this video if you like it. Thanks so much.